So if you follow my YouTube or my channel, you'll notice that I recently got a Lexus GX 460 and the plan is to turn that into an overlanding vehicle or a camping vehicle, uh, just something that I can take off-road. I want it to be off-road ready. I want to be able to drive in the snow. Living in Colorado, sooner or later it's going to snow. So I just want it to be a little bit more capable than what it is right now. So the Lexus GX 460 is based on a uh, Land Cruiser Prado, which is only available overseas, and here it's most comparable to a, a forerunner, if you will. They share a lot of body parts with that particular model. As you all know, Lexus is made by Toyota, and so forth and so forth. But one of the biggest things in an off-road vehicle or in a camping vehicle is going to be communications, right? After the lift and the winch, the bumper and all that kind of stuff. Communications are also very important, especially if you're going out there camping by yourself, you're not with a big group, you're going to need a way to communicate. So I found something communication-wise that I think is very cool and that is the Midland MXT 500. When I'm out there camping and I'm not with a big group, I want to know that I'm able to still rescue myself or get services if I need them. A tire goes out, two tires go out, and I need somebody to come and get me. I want to know that I can communicate with people, right? And so, historically, I've used, you know, just a handheld such as this. This is actually a Wuxan. Um, hopefully you guys can see that. So this is a Wuxan. And it's a GMRS radio. I like this. I think it's a pretty good device. But usually when you order them, they've got a crazy long uh, backlog or back order due to all the craziness we've been having in the world right now. But this is a nice device. I like it because I can put it um, in my panniers on my motorcycle, take it with me. If I'm on my ATV back there, I can also just throw it in the glove compartment, always with me. I don't have to worry about it being fixed into a particular vehicle. The problem, though, it is not long range or it's not as long range as other options which brings us to what we have here today which is the MXT 500 so the MXT 500 is pretty unique because it's the first time Midland has done anything like this it's the highest watt GMRS radio allowed by the FCC so I think their previous iteration was a 400 or something like that but that was only 40 watt so the idea here today before we even open the box is to initially go through the feature set off the radio and just kind of talk it all out see what it is and what makes it such a big deal all right so just looking at the box here the very first thing that they list out is the 50 watt is and excuse me if I'm looking down, I'm trying to figure out these, um, um, I'm trying to go through these in order, so that's what we'll be talking through. Historically, these radios have been 40 watts. I think that's the last one that Midland came up with. It was a 40 watt radio. Why is that important to you? The higher the wattage, the longer distance you can communicate. And it's not quite that simple because there's other perimeters there that kind of influence that decision. We'll talk about some of those as we go down the list. but. Basically, the more wattage you have, the further you can communicate. So why isn't it 100 watts? Well, the FCC has regulations that stop you from being able to use a radio that's over 50 watts. So this here is the maximum that you can actually have on a GMRS radio. So number one is what makes that cool, all right? So the second item on this box is actually USB-C fast charging port. Okay, so that's important and that's actually cool to have. USB Type-C is a new USB standard, so I'm glad that they threw that in there. But it allows you to charge. You can charge your, your iPhone, your iPads, and even something as big as a, a laptop. So that's a pretty cool thing about that and being able to just plug into the front of that device. Depending on where you got it located, maybe you want to edit some videos or whatever it is, it's nice to know that you're actually able to do that. All right, uh, the third thing here is water resistant IP66. So we'll talk about that. What does that mean? IP66 means ingress, ingress protection, right? That number denotes the testing that the device has undergone. That first number in this case, which is a six, refers to solids, right? So that means that they've tested this device and they've measured it in this particular case to show that it's not penetrable by dust. So it's basically dust tight, okay? The second number is also a six, and I believe those numbers go up to a nine. But a six means basically that they've tested this device against um, high-powered water jet, 
and water was not able to get in there. So you should be able to go through the car wash and kind of wash this radio and you wouldn't affect it, right? Unless you got some kind of exposed wires and you get a short circuit or whatever. But the radio itself is waterproof to the effect that you could wash it with a powered jet of some sort and not be able to get water ingress into the actual device. So that's pretty cool. Um, you cannot submerge it into water though. I think that's those uh, nines and those eights, but you will not be able to submerge this into water. It's not at least tested to do that. Could you do it and get away with it? Perhaps, I don't know, maybe for a very limited amount of time, but it should not be submitted or submerged into water. It's not tested for that. Um, the next thing here is gonna be, uh, what do we have? 15 high power GMRS channels. Okay, that's kind of self explanatory. Um, we've got eight repeater channels, split tone repeater capable. So, the best way for me to explain a repeater is if you're in your house and you've got Wi Fi, you've noticed that sometimes you walk outside and you no longer are able to get a signal. But usually you got these devices, be it a plug in wall outlet, you can plug that in and that extends your signal out a little bit. A repeater is the same thing for radios. So let's say you got a radio. That radio only communicates for one mile. You want to communicate with somebody at the two mile range. If you had a repeater between you and that person, you would be able to communicate your message to the repeater. The repeater takes that message and guess what? Repeats it. In the most simplest sense, that's what that is. So this has got eight repeater channels and you're able to use all those to further your communication. So it takes whatever range you have and you can send it further and further and further out, right? The more repeaters that you're able to hit, the more you'd be able to get that message to communicate over longer distances, all right? Let's see, the next thing is 142 privacy codes. So what exactly does that mean? Privacy codes to me, again, another computer reference, um, it's like the VPN. If you're on the internet, for example, it's usually unsafe, right? But a lot of us have been working from home. The way you're able to do that is using VPN. VPN takes the internet and kind of puts a bubble around it so that your work messages can travel along that bubble safely. These kind of codes do the same thing. You're still on channel 17 or channel 5 or whatever it is, but it kind of encapsulates your messages or it kind of filters, I shouldn't say it kept, so what it does is that it blocks out all the other messages or filters messages that are coming towards you so that you only hear messages coming from that um, transmitter that you've shared that privacy code with, all right? So all the other messages are still going on on the channel, but you're only hearing the messages coming from that certain person that you've communicated that privacy code to. So there's 142 of those, just in case one is busy, you can switch to the other, etc, etc. Right? Let's see. So extreme range. Okay. Extreme range is, uh, there's actually an asterisk here, right? Uh, under extreme range. And um, I, I would love to know exactly what they say about that. Okay. There we go. So it says maximum range can only be achieved over water or open rural areas under optimum conditions. All right. So what does that mean? So these GMRS radios, sometimes you'll go to the stores, right, and you'll find a, a radio, a GMRS radio, a Cabela's or something, and it says 30 mile range on just a handheld. That is in the most perfect conditions, and those conditions are, like the box says, over water, right? So you've got no obstructions whatsoever, and you're not in, a, in the bottom of the boat or whatever it is. You're standing right on the deck, no obstructions, no antennas, no nothing else around you. Maybe you're just walking on water, right? You're gonna get the best possible distance out of your radio. Same thing if you're in the rural areas and there's nothing, right? No trees, no nothing. You're just in flatland somewhere, maybe Moab or I don't know, the Sahara Desert or something like that. You're able to get the best, um, the longest distance or you're able to send the longest distance and receive from the longest distance possible. So urban areas are bad for radios, right? There's a lot of um, interference. There are trees, there are buildings, there are cars, there's other radio waves. All that creates congestion and you're not able to communicate to that 32 miles or whatever that's supposed to be, all right? Also other things are gonna affect this, which is if you're on a mobile device or a mobile radio kind of like this, and you were communicating to a radio, a handheld like this, 
that alone is going to cause problems because these devices do not have the same power. That wattage that we were talking about, this is a 50 watt device versus this. I'm not sure what that is, but a lot of common radios are between one and five watts. This is supposed to be one of the better ones. I'd have to take a look at that and I'll put that in the screen here. I'm just drawing a blank as to what exactly that was. But anyway, I digress. So the point is, if you're on a mobile radio in your car and you're communicating to somebody who's in a handheld, that alone is going to decrease the distance for which you can communicate. Same thing if you're on two handhelds, that's going to narrow that distance. If you're on a mobile radio and you're trying to communicate with somebody on another mobile radio on the other end, that's going to increase the distance that you're actually able to communicate. Antennas also play a part in this. If you got a longer antenna, kind of like what you see on the military vehicles, that's going to give you way more range for you to communicate. So that's how that works out. So tons of things that kind of affect that and that's why they had to asterisk that because it's not quite that simple. You're not gonna pick up one of these radios and start communicating with Mars. It doesn't quite work like that. All right, let's see what we have. Talk to other FRS, GMRS radios. So FRS stands for Family Radio Service, I believe. And that is your basic walkie-talkies almost, right? That's that old style radios we were used to. They've got about a one mile, two mile range in great conditions. Uh, those are the radios that we're used to, but you can communicate uh, on those or to those devices from your GMRS radio. So that's actually pretty cool. And then uh, it of course communicates with other GMRS radios. So it's not, hey, I can only communicate with somebody else who has a Midland radio or something like that. As long as you guys are on the same channel, you should be able to communicate with those people. So the next thing that we have here is power, high, medium, low settings, all right? So what does that mean? So if you were in an urban area like we just talked about, you may want to have that on a higher power setting so that you can penetrate some of these obstructions and get your signal where it needs to go. And versus if you're out on the water, you would be able to use less power because there's less obstructions out there. Regardless, it's got three different modes for you to be able to communicate. Uh, let us see, NOAA weather radio. Also another cool feature about this radio is that NOAA, right? So NOAA weather, that's pretty cool. And uh, now I'm testing myself here. Uh, Northern Oceanic Atmospheric something something. I'm gonna put that at the bottom, but that's what that stands for. And basically what that means is um, you'll be able to receive weather you'll be able to receive weather updates when you're out in the middle of nowhere when your iPhone stops working and you don't have internet you're able to at least tune into these 10 stations I think it is 10 stations and get weather service reports maybe a storm is coming in your area maybe you got to get out all that kind of stuff you'll be able to hear that on the NOAA channel so super cool on that uh let us see narrow and wide band so narrow band and wide band means this radio is capable of communicating on both those bands narrow band is usually what it's a low power mode that enables you to communicate but usually because of that you can only communicate so far think of your remote for your car for example right that's usually uh, narrow band so you can't stand two miles away and try to unlock your car it's not going to work so that's what narrow band is based on wide band is more like a broad band it's using more frequencies to communicate so that's going to take it you can communicate over a longer distance so that's the difference between those two things historically i think these were all narrow band but now they got wide band so that's awesome uh, automatic power off so you can set the power off anybody who's got a radio and it's connected directly to the battery and maybe you didn't connect it to your accessory switch or fuse panel and so it's connected directly to your battery if you leave that on it's going to drain your battery over time so what this helps you do is that you can set a timer in the radio and that allows you to um, turn it off automatically after x amount of time and then saves your battery okay uh, let us see Automatic power off, channel scan. Channel scan, common on all the radios if you're using FRS, walkie-talkies, that kind of thing. You can actually just scan through your range of channels to see if there's anybody on them. So you can set it to automatically do that. And whenever it detects communication or a signal on any channel, it stops there for X amount of time. I think it's three seconds. I'll put that in the bottom if it's not right. It stops there for like three seconds or pauses and gives you a chance to communicate. 
If you don't send a signal, it then continues on and it'll just keep scanning and scanning as it finds signals. It does the same thing where it kind of just stops, all right? Um, what is next? Keypad lock. Keypad lock, kind of almost self-explanatory, but you can lock the keypad on this device so that you don't do accidental touches and change the station and wonder why nobody's communicating with you because you bumped your radio and switched the station. So that's what that's about, all right? Monitor mode. So monitor mode allows you to hear signals that may be weak or bypass any privacy codes that you may have set so that any traffic on that particular channel comes through to you. Um, I'm hoping that I explained that um, completely. If you think you've got a better way of explaining that, just go ahead and put that in the comment section. But uh, that's how I understand that. All right? Okay. Uh, silent operation. Silent operation is... Mm, silent operation silences all the beeps and the tones that come out of your radio so that I don't know, maybe you're in a tactical situation, maybe you're in a tent and there's a bunch of people sleeping, but whatever scenario that may be for you, it silences all that so that you're not hearing all those noises all the time. Or maybe they're just annoying, but that's what that is. Um, the last thing, one-year warranty, GMRS license required. So GMRS radios have to have a GMS, GM, GMRS license. I'll put the description here in the bottom or the link where you can go to acquire that. I think it's about $35 as of the making of this video. I think it's about $35 and it lasts about 10 years. And the cool thing about that is once you get the license, anybody in your family can use it. You do have to be 18 to get the license, but if an 18 year old gets the license, anybody in their family can use it regardless of their age, right? And uh, expires in 10 years, you gotta renew it. You can renew it in about, well, well, you can renew it about 90 days before it expires. And if you let it expire, you'll have to actually uh, reapply for a license. So try not to let it expire. So the next thing we'll actually try to do is we'll get into the radio, we'll open it up, We'll take a look at the components, see everything that it comes with, and um, uh, talk through all that. I like the radio so far. Um, the only thing I'm concerned about, which I'll have to kind of work through, is the fact that there's not a lot of places to mount it in a Lexus um, SUV. So I'm kind of playing around with the idea of getting an MXT 575. And that is uh, different in that if you're looking at this radio right now, the radio itself the radio itself has an interface on it and so you can't put it away because you kind of have to interact with it. The MXT 575 does not have that so everything is kind of located on the actual microphone itself so the buttons, the channel changing, all the information you need is on, is on a little display on the actual radio so um, that is the beauty of that and I may be looking into getting that instead. But for right now, this works. I'm actually just enjoying going through this radio, testing it out a little bit, kind of testing the signal with this handheld to see exactly how far I can communicate. I also got a bigger antenna or a longer antenna or a higher DBI, higher gain um, antenna. And we're gonna test that as well and see what kind of range we can get out of that. So I look forward to uh, getting different devices. Maybe I'll save this MXT500, put that in my uh, Can-Am Commander over there and uh, the MXT 575 can go in the Lexus. But that's all future videos and future plans. Hopefully this was helpful to everybody. And until then, peace.